Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to uh, another update here from the off-grid garage, especially from the SPED calibration center. It is now the next morning. We have started with this test to compare the accuracy of all three versions of the JK inverter BMS 14, version 15, and version 19. We have started with this test last night, and the car is still charging after 23 hours. And it's probably charging for another three or four hours at least. But we want to have a quick look already at the state of charge. What the JK BMS thinks the battery is at and what the smart shun shows us. You can see we are still pulling 1.9 kilowatt from the system. A little bit is coming from solar already, 115 watts. Well, I'll take it. And the JK BMS overall capacity of the battery shows 29% state of charge. Yeah. While our smart shunt, which measures the same amount of ampere hours going out of the battery, thinks we are at 30.9. So this is actually not too bad. This is only this is less than 2%, very small delta. And I could see this yesterday throughout the day, throughout the evening, early night, and they were always around 1 to 1.5% off. So JK is a bit lower than the actual smart shunt. Top battery is at 26%, first slave 32%, then 28% and 30 for the bottom battery here. And we also want to have a look at the um, smart shunt test. Not the smart shunt, the smart shunt test. Here it is. Okay, it shows us the same information. We have consumed 815.6 ampere hours, but I made actually a mistake yesterday. Well, if you go to the history here, we can see we have discharged 860 ampere hours, almost 55 kilowatt hours of energy taken out of these four batteries. This is not quite true because I have forgotten to reset the history in the smart shunt. Well, this was actually not part of the test, but it would be nice to have this information over time so we can see how much amp hours went into the battery and how much went out and what was the energy taken in and out. But I did a screenshot from the video when we tested the Orion Power, the Jackie battery with this smart shunt test. And here we can see the result of the Jackie battery again. So we have to deduct these values here on the screen from our smart shunt live view. These numbers were already in the Victron smart shunt test before we started the test yesterday. So, so we just need to keep this in mind when we do the overall assessment of the whole situation then. But I think after eight or 10 weeks, these small numbers here probably don't make a big difference anymore. Okay, also let's have a look at the BMS inside the vehicle. So we are on 90% state of charge roughly. Uh, minimum cell voltage is 3.37, maximum is 3.37. There's not much going on for the last a lot of hours. And battery voltage is really, really constant. The only thing we can see is a slight increase in overall pack voltage. And of course the state of charge is increasing. Apart from that, everything else, well, we just need to wait. It is roughly 2.9% per hour charging. So this may take another three hours. It will be this afternoon. We will fully charge the car in the afternoon, but I have to watch the cell voltages here in the vehicle because this is the only indicator telling me we are getting close to fully charging the vehicle. The state of charge could be off by a few percent, but the cell voltage never lies. I'll be back in a few hours when we fully charge the car and then we have a quick look here at the situation again and then we go from there and this will be the end of this very short update video. All right, you have a wonderful whatever. Three hours later. So, and we want to have another look at the BMS of the vehicle. We are at 99% state of charge for quite a while actually. The display in the car shows 97.3%, so they are coming together slowly. But you can also see 99% is not quite true because the cell voltage are, is only at 3.38 volts. So there is a bit of an discally un, in uncalibration, in calibration. But this is exactly why they recommend to fully charge the car once a week and do this procedure here from under 20% state of charge to 100 every two to three months. This learns the BMS actually about the capacity, about the performance of the pack. 
and of course the weekly charge to 100% resets the BMS shown in the display and the real true state of charge back to 100%. And with these batteries there's no other way. And yes, you can also see here the state of health of this battery is down to 95.5%. We've got the vehicle for 11 months here, almost a year now, and, and my wife put a bit over 5,000 kilometers on the clock. But yeah, the 95.5% state of health, this is probably my own fault, because when we got the car, I said, well, I don't, I don't need to read the manual, you know. I, I don't need someone else to tell me how to charge a lithium-ion phosphate battery. So we charge it to a 60%, 50%, 60%, 70%, sometimes to 80%, but never, never ever to 100. And we never did this below 20 to 100 procedure. So the BMS learns about the capacity of the pack. Never. Because I'm not doing this in my battery shelf either. And I checked the battery pack and the BMS with the app, of course, from time to time. And I could see the state of health going down. Well, and when it hit 95% um, state of health, I actually looked into the manual and then I discovered this procedure you should follow to keep the battery and the BMS happy. And the customer, of course, <laughs> because, yeah. So I guess this full discharge and charge again makes a big difference in the state of health. So this does, of course, not mean that the battery is actually at 95.5%. This is only what the BMS has calculated. The battery will be on 100% state of health still, or maybe on 99.9%. .9%. And I don't actually think that state of health will go up again because this is not something they put in the algorithm of the software of the BMS. Usually when a battery is degraded, it doesn't get better anymore, right? So I assume this will stay there forever now, 95.5%, but this is just what the number shows. Doesn't mean anything. Well, I could potentially do a separate videos about the BMS of the car in the Tesla Model 3, as well as in the Aura. There's so much to discover, so much to learn, but this is actually how this all started here on YouTube back in the day when I did videos on my car channel. So, okay, let's give it another, um, I don't know, 45 minutes, I would guess, until we see the 100, 100 and then we can finally stop discharging this battery. Oh, here we are down to 20% state of charge, what the JK BMS reports to the Victron system. And the Smart Chan test says we are on 22.4% state of charge. So let's see what's going to happen. One hour later. Okay, my friends, we are close to um, the car being fully charged. We are 3.53 volts with the highest cell voltage. And this is the um, SPED calibration center. We are down to 17% or 19.5 if you want to believe the smart shunt. So 2.5% off, 14% in the top battery, 21% in the version 14 BMS and 17% in the version 15 BMS. So at the moment, version 14 measures the best. It is the closest to 19.5%. Okay, we have 3.55 volts and the lowest cell is 3.43 volts. So there is a bit of an imbalance, but it will get better over time. Because, as I said, we haven't fully charged this vehicle for quite a while. Who's telling me how to charge lithium iron phosphate correctly, right? And I made actually a spreadsheet and every time we fully charge the car, I get a screenshot of this uh, BMS data here and put this all in the spreadsheet. And I can see that the deviation actually goes down. And at 3.65, of course, the BMS will turn off, stop charging and resets both display and the true state of charge to 100%. And then everything is fully calibrated. Even the battery is technically not at 100% state of charge, but this is the maximum the BMS can actually do. Yeah, as soon as one cell hits 3.65 volts, that's basically it. I'm not even sure why I tell you all this. This has nothing to do with the JK inverter BMS test we are doing right now. I'm just getting sidetracked very quickly with this because I'm finding it fascinating that we can fully charge a vehicle now and drive for hundreds of kilometers. But yeah, we can um, certainly do a deep dive into this topic here and I can tell you the story how I destroyed the vehicle's battery in 11 months. So uh, leave your comments down below if you're interested. And because we are not going into a constant voltage situation with this battery, the current will actually not taper off. So 3.64, 3.65. There we go, 100. 100. That's a fully charged car. 
Okay, my friends, anyway, this is just a quick update, <laughs> relatively quick for my channel here about the different models of the JK inverter BMS and the precision of the measured or calculated state of charge. 17, 16, 21, 13. So the version 19 is actually the worst. Version 14 is the most precise. But this is just from this discharge test here, of course. Okay, and now we can see we are recharging the battery from solar for the next um, two or three days potentially until my wife needs the car again and then she will plug in and we keep the battery on 70 or 80 percent maybe in this range and we recharge only what is needed for daily driving so the battery will always have a couple of days time to slowly recharge again and then we take out a whole chunk of energy again for the vehicle charging so let's see how this works if it works i don't know the battery is already down at 17 percent so uh. All right, my friends, so far this small update here. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for your amazing support here on the channel. Really appreciate everything you're doing. Special thanks always goes to the people who are donating to the channel or becoming a channel member. Thank you very, very much for your ongoing support. Until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.